Welcome to the final match of BSL Season 14 Hasu League Group E. Upper right hand corner, we have one last probe, aka Starsley. As the red Protoss, bottom right hand corner, we have Dentarg. As the gray Protoss, and this is on Metaverse. And even though this group was a little bit chaotic, I still think it was one of my favorite groups. <laughs> it was one of the ones I really wanted to cast when I saw Hasu League and the lineup we had. I'm hoping to get an 80s mullet match in here as well. And there's just a lot of other players. This is going to be on Metaverse, which between these two, I don't know who to favor. Dentarg, strong player. Starsley ended up in the winner's match. And so... And I don't know how strong either of their PvP is. So this will be an interesting test. We are seeing a forward pylon for both players. And I heard Nayokin actually make some comments on this. Is This is a little, apparently a little bit dangerous because you, you place your gateway here. If you're not opening up two gate, which Dentark might be right here, you do open yourself up to the possibility of a pylon wall over your assimilator, which can be annoying. The proxy pylons from probes, which people will exploit. So initial gateway down from one last probe. We are seeing the initial gateway for Dentarg. Looks like he is pulling this probe back. So we'll have to see whether he go. First of all, I have to see whether he is opting for two gate. And then also we well actually maybe not it, if he was placing it. So up here it should be fine. I guess that's just the warning. I don't. I am not the ultra skilled Starcraft player. I'm just the commentator. I will say. It looks like we are seeing two gate off this forward pylon for Star Lady. We are seeing two gate on the opposite corner. So two gate should make that fine. So it's going to be two gate versus two gate. Somehow Starsley up like a half a probe. It looked like he had that probe come out a little bit earlier. With this, it's going to be a super micro fight. And both players are going to see each other first. So it's going to be first scout. So it's going to be Zealot versus Zealot and a true micro fight. And I honestly wonder how much a factor this scouting probe is going to be for both players. Because one thing when you are opening up two gate, proxy pylons can be a huge annoyance. We already see one defensive pylon out for Starsley. This pylon's alongside the assimilator to potentially speed up gas production, but depending on where this zealot is, as it's chasing units around, well, I guess it's, it's two questions. Does either player, upon seeing the two gate on either side, opt to leave the base, or are they just going to both blockade ramps and play from there? We do have gas being plopped down. No gas as of yet for one last probe, which suggests he does want to open up with a heavier zealot play. I think that has that has been scattered from Dentarg. Dentarg is noticing that there's no additional gas. So two zealots on the low ground already. This potentially plays in Dentarg's favor. Because he's going to be able to build the units he needs to defend later. And actually, no. Skipping everything and grabbing a Nexus. I don't know if Dentarg realized this is the case or not. So now, yeah. Okay, now I think he has suspicions. So he's going to wander in. He's going to see this. That's going to provoke four Zealots to start marching. Nothing else. The Cybernetic Score is being built. And thinking better of it, actually wandering right back into the base... But I kind of like this play on Starsley's part. He's like, okay, if we have even production, I will just go ahead and drop a Nexus in your face and feel confident that I could drop a shield battery and defend this down the line. So now it is up to Dentarg to respond in kind and go ahead and bust this. I would not be shocked to see a forge from Starsley. He is pumping more Zealots. Now here's the thing. Dentar grabbing his own Nexus, so it looks like this is going to move towards more towards the mid game. An additional Zealot being plopped down. Probe still alive in this base. This, these are some like long lived probes. Usually, probes do not last this long in a PvP. And kind of an unusual PvP we're seeing here. So, we got five Zealots on one end. The Nexus now coming online. So, Starsley, and yeah, dropping the shield battery just in case. But honestly, I don't even know that that was necessary. But is necessary because he lost his probe scout to this zealot. What a murderer. Killing your Protoss. I always wonder how that works in PvP. Is it just like rebel Protoss? Is it just Protoss that... Is it Protoss that just they always live? Because it's like, you know, whenever you see the zealot die, it's like their soul flies out of their body and they just go become a dragoon, I guess, someplace as part of their great ethereal... Do they just have like practice fights where they just straight up do what they would usually do in a common battle? The mysteries of Protoss. 
range being upgraded, range being skipped, which potentially could result in an earlier robotics facility, which would help in this defense. We've got seven zealots versus five zealots and a dragoon potentially. Dentarg just opting to go ahead and saturate his natural expansion. He's going to be a little bit behind in the overall economy as far as things filtered in, but that might the difference might have been in that shield battery, but that does give Starsley a more defensible position over the long term. Single Dragoon making his way out to go ahead and peek and see what Dentarg was up to. Not sure if he realizes that there was a natural expansion there or not. There is the robotics facility coming online. The forge is here as well. So basically, Starsley, this was kind of like a double play here. So Starsley assumed that Dentarg was going to get aggressive and come into him. So he built the forge and a photon cannon to play more defensively. But right now, Dentarg is actually even in the probe count. He's going to go ahead and peek the front door. He sees the shield battery and a bunch of units creating a defensive wall. So he just needs to not get run over and he'll be okay. So he's going to back off. So right now, Starsley thinks like, okay... I'm in an economic lead. I can just sit back and build. But what that's going to result in is his Dentarg being able to advance his build order, get range, get the robotics facility, and potentially take a lead in the mid-game. Second gas coming online. But plus one weapons is going to be there for Starsley. Plus one weapons against Reaver, though. I would rather have the Reaver. Might be a timing to go ahead and hit. We'll see if there is a... And there's the observatory. There might be a... If we see a Citadel of a Dune in the near future, could see a shift. Both players actually have economy to work with. I'm not... So there's two... There's both still sitting on two gates. Usually this is where you want to be on four gate. Robotic support bay coming down for Dentarg. So that is going to give him, I think, the tech lead. There's two additional gateways. Three additional gateways being dropped for Starsley. So he wants to have, yeah, big economic flood in the mid game. So plus one weapons... Plus, results. it looks like he's going to go ahead and get that robotics facility, potentially get an observer, and deal with what might be DT out on the field. But with this initial observer coming out, Dentar going to be able to go ahead and walk up and see that he's in a really strong position. He's actually up a probe, up in tech, as far as the raw troop count, up there as well. He's got more Dragoons to work with, but he will be down plus one weapons. And one interesting play here. Starsley hopping a... Willing to spend 33 minerals to hop this probe to the north, potentially to take his third at this power generator. It's going to be a while, though, before that probe is able to chew through the power generator there, just now getting that robotics facility online. The probe from Dencar playing very, very passively. He just wants to go ahead and get... I think this is trying to be a hidden third. He's like, okay, usually the third might be taken here, so instead he's like, maybe if I take it in this back corner... It won't get scouted. Dentarg, I think, now realizes that there's no Observer, which means there's no Reavers back here. There's the Citadel of Adun. But these gateways, yeah, a, a handful of them have been quiet. Looks like they're mostly producing Dragoons, and I'm wondering if Starsley's going to move out momentarily once that plus one weapons comes online. Two additional gateways being plopped down. There are going to be two Reavers to help negate that, and it looks like Dentarg actually... Dropping, I think he realizes being in the stronger economic position, he just wants to go ahead and scout and make sure that there wasn't a hidden base take, taken somewhere out in the field. Two cannons here, that's 300 resources. Indifferent, so plus one weapons will be here. Looks like Starsley did see that shimmer. Probe still working on that power generator. Go, Probe, go. However, it looks like Dentark scouts it. So as soon as he has a shuttle, honestly, he can get up and go. And yeah, he'll be down that plus one weapons, but being up to Reavers is a huge advantage. Templar Archives being built in the background as well, and an additional, so that's going to be six gateways plopped down. I'm sure, sure why I decided to click off that. So additional gateways being plopped for Dentarg. Dentarg, I think, in a comfortable position to go ahead and take his third. Starsley walking up. He's going to see that shuttle. He's going to know that there's Reavers. He's going to see, however, that there's also delayed gateways and a delayed Citadel of Adun. So maybe if he can buy some time, get some High Templar out, he'll be ahead in that regard. But right now, with that Reaver, and knowing that he's got the two Reaver advantage, fanning out towards that front, Starsley backing this army up, 
This is just as the power generator getting low on health to potentially be taken out. And with these Reavers, with some decent shots, if an Observer can get in position, he can go ahead and potentially bully his way up into the natural expansion. So the Observer scouting, that poor Zealot being sacrificed to scout. Starsley's trying to fan out the troops. Keep in mind, if it can just be army on army, if he can neutralize the Reaver, his Dragoons and everything hit harder, but he's got to keep a cohesive attack force to make that happen. Losing a Dragoon and a Zealot for free currently, fanning out. The Reaver has to be part of this battle. Well, actually, if Starsley's just retreating and eating fire the entire time, no, he doesn't. Still positioning and boxing out that third. So he's boxing out that third while he potentially is taking his own, but Dentarg now losing control of a couple of his troops, a couple of Zealots getting attacked. Starsley sweeping to the south. Did the Reaver get taken? I, I lost track of the Reaver. I'm wondering if the Reaver got taken out. No, there's the Reavers to the north. I think they just killed the probe to the north to deny that third, but now the Reavers, the shuttle's been taken out. But the Reavers are still very much part of this fight. Taking out a lot of troops. Dentarg trading armies here. Completely surrounding everything. And there is nothing left. Yeah, the two Reavers doing a massive amount of damage. And despite the plus one weapons and a closer reinforcement point, Dentarg now needs that shield battery to defend on the front. The High Templar gets picked off, which means Psystorm's not going to be here to support. And that might be GG. As Dragoons are now picking off cannons and walking and just... Yeah, it's a closer reinforcement point, but here's the thing. Dentarg can go ahead and, even if he doesn't win this fight, even if he just backs up outside the shield battery range, looks like he is putting up troops to support. He can go ahead and take his third, where Starsley cannot. Still with the troop advantage. Keep in mind, this is now plus one weapons. Looks like it's even weapons now. A zealot's being flooded down. Neither zealot group of zealots has leg speed. Dentark's still trying to micro, and he's focus firing these Dragoons down. The shield battery, still full, but it's going to be... I don't know that it's going to be a factor. This is just an overwhelming amount of Dragoons now on the front. The natural expansion breached. Starsley still trying to put up a decent fight, hoping reinforcements will be sufficient. He's got a lot of gateways behind this. Another grouping of reinforcements coming down for Dentark, but he's also grabbing his third behind this. And it looks like now Zealots with Leg Speed are marching up. So Starsley defends, but he's nowhere near a third base. Shield Battery's been a huge help in these fights. The Zealots now getting on top of the Dragoons. They're getting pushed back. And Starsley, while all this is happening, yeah. Even if he manages to defend, he's still going to end up in the long term falling economically behind. Because he's not going to be able to regroup and attack into... And a, wow, after all of this, a Reaver and a Shuttle now grouping up. Probe's getting annihilated at the natural. So just scooping up, doing one big probe hit to just kind of cap it. And that almost felt like the, the last bloop. It's kind of like that was the last tap. That's all I needed is take out some probes. Now he's got that third base. Now all Dentark has to do is drop a couple of additional gateways and defend. I don't know if he has a site. He is developing Size Storm, working on Dark Templar. Reavers near the high ground. Starsley initially engaging. The Observer is fanning out just to make sure. And Starsley backing up. No. So backing up, trying to get in a defensive posture once again. Maybe he wants to try to grab his third. Dentarg with the economic lead. He's got that third established. Cannons now coming online. There was maybe a window where Starsley might have been able to take that third out. But now with Dark Templar here. And everything else. Yeah, okay. He's just going to try to back up and grab his third. But Dentarg in a commanding position now. Looking behind this. He's got six gateways. Looks like Starsley has, wow, gone up to a lot of gateways. Nine gateways. So maybe with a unit flood, he can wipe out the third here before the economy kicks, on, kicks in. There's a lot of cannons, though, in the way. Really, the timing he needs to hit is before High Templar and Psy Storm is finished. The Observer seeing a lot of troops along the way. It looks like Dentarg, lo Dentarg needs to preserve troops and maybe produce Reavers. Basically, anything. Yeah, more Reavers. More Reavers and some High Templar. Basically, stuff to do s splash so we can go ahead and hold this. But while that was happening, I missed a drop at the main. 
Looks like probes were sent scattering to the natural expansion. And potentially, I think only three died because he was at a 39 count previously. He's going to go ahead. He's checking. Yeah, this location to see the third. He's going to be able to confirm with it looks like Unipo oh, some Dark Templar moving up. The Dark Templar might be able to go ahead and get in the third and create some disruption. So Dentark just making sure that initial base wasn't snuck at any location. Holding the high ground. High Templar taking the field. You've got Reavers here as well. Now filtering to go ahead and cap that economic lead. He does need to add additional gateways. To match the gateway count. As Starsley is now starting to mine off three bases. Which means he is going to be able to roll that production. Dentark with a 25 supply lead. However, a lot of that is in probes. Good amount of High Templar out for Starsley as well. So he's not out of this match yet. He's taken a lot of hits. He's taken a lot of hits. But he's got plus one weapons, plus one armor. Which is going to be even on upgrades. He's got a sizable army with a lot of gateways. And he's catching High Templar out in open field to turn around Storm, catching a few units. But that's only one Storm, So maybe he can punch into this third. The Reaver's trying to reposition to the low ground. That shuttle has... Is that shuttle going to get taken out? That shuttle dropping the Reaver. The Reaver getting one shot. That's going to soften up those zealots a bit. But Dentark out of position. And is Reaver eating a massive amount of Storm? Counter Storm over the wall. Starsley might have enough troops, but there's a lot of cannons. Dropping a lot of Storm from his wall, though. Dentarg engaging from the north. Pincering the rest of the troops, and there's some troops that are being lazy and not joining Starsley's attack. And so these Dragoons being betrayed by their brethren, they needed to make it happen. That army's going to get wiped out. Dentark now didn't even lose any probes here. There weren't any side storms there. It looks like finally these troops waking up. And with that exchange, Dentark holds, has three bases well saturated, has a probe lead, has a bunch of high Templars still out on the field. Can march forward and get aggressive. Looks like he's already grabbing a fourth in this bottom left-hand corner. However, let's go ahead and look at the gateway count. This is the one thing that's been a little bit behind Starsley. So we got six, seven, eight. I think that's eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, confirmed eight. Then Targ diving in, loses a high Templar, two high Templar. Able to clear out that third great size storms in retreat he's got another tick before he can drop another big size storm so being pushed out of this but he was able to do a lot of interruption starsley trying to grab his fourth i don't know that he can hold that though so starsley's been slightly behind but honestly this hasn't turned into wins for dentarg dentarg now backing out he's been able to do some good economic damage he's still leading Going to get this fourth up before Starsley gets his fourth. This fourth is very exposed as well. Unscouted as of yet. Dentarg regrouping with his troops. Behind this, though, yeah, the gateway count has been larger. With the nine count. Natural expansion, mind out, main mind out. Natural expansion, yeah, so it's going to be two base versus two base toss momentarily. Dentarg still with the lead. But Starsley not out of it yet. And he's been, it looks like, staying on top of rolling the Forge upgrades. Going up to plus two weapons, where this is going to be silent. Unless that finished already. So plus two armors there, actually. So there is going to be troop lead for Dentark. His troops are going to hit harder. A lot of territory to cover. Surprising amount of observers, or lack of observers, I was going to say, spread out in the field for Dentark. He's got them all bunched up with his army. Starsley now grouping around his fourth. He managed to get probes transferred here. Both players, I'm not sure they've got each other's armies tracked right now. Dentarg, a kind of a bad engagement point. As Starsley looks like he might be able to crash in this bottom left-hand corner. A lot of cannons are in the way. I don't see any high Templar with this group. So yeah, pushing in. That's triggering Dentark to go ahead and try to re-engage. His army's coming in potentially piecemeal. The pylon's down. It's going to unpower. And now, Starsley has an engagement on the high ground. Which is going to force Dentark to regroup. He, if he's going to scale up, he needs to go ahead and drop Psystorms. 
to go up the high ground, and that is exactly what he's doing. Now he'll be able to bully his way up, catching some of his own observers, but blanketing these Dragoons as well. And with that engagement, the Dragoons trying to get some pro kills. Looks like some Dragoons got left to go ahead and work with that. A handful of troops may be able to escape out of this for Starsley, but now he's way behind in the supply count. So he got pushed in, was able to do a little bit of damage, but doesn't look like it was worth it. Looks like Dentard still able to use that economic advantage and just staying on top of his macro. Zealot's looking to engage. An Archon is here. This Archon just engaging. There's no Observer to deal with this Dark Templar. The High Templar right there not able to drop Sidestorm. The Observer coming in too late. And now empty Sidestorms. The second Sidestorm right on top of the High Templar's head just to make it worthwhile. Double Supply lead now for Dentarg. Infirm map control. Potentially can go ahead and grab the main in the bottom left. And Starsley in trouble. He's mining off two bases. Two bases there for Dentarg. Big probe lead, although at 52, I think he wanted to be saturated across three. And his third starting to look thin, so he might want to think about going ahead and grabbing a fourth. I think I missed another drop. Missed a side storm drop, but I don't think it caught a lot of probes because this was empty. Been a little bit lacking catching these drops today. Try to do a better job keeping an eye on the minimap. Just look at this minimap, though. Another drop moving in here. Dark Templar dropping first to absorb cannon fire. There's some side storm. And more side storm. Caught the one that counted, obliterating everything here. And Dentard moving in, getting some great side storms on Dragoon lines. Nice little peel off. Catches his own observer, but also picks a lot of. Zealots out in the midst of that. Another High Templar getting picked off. And now this base is going to be breached in. I think this is the GG moment. As Starsley down to 21 probes. Doesn't have enough troops to defend this third base. And losing this with a thinning... Well, still, I guess, operational. He, he's nowhere in position to do anything to Dentard. And can't even defend, hold map control, or take additional base. Down to 18 probes. So he's got this standing army to win the match with. He's got a lot of High Templar. Maybe if he can do a two-pronged attack, pick off a lot of probes here, pick off a lot of probes in the bottom left, and Dentar drops his keyboard, breaks it in half, and loses the end key to build Nexuses. Interestingly enough, though, it is one base versus one base. However, there's still that huge probe difference. Dentar realizing... But he needs to defend bottom left. He's got units coming in from both angles. The High Templar being caught out of position. Expending side storms with and on top of themselves. On portions of the army that aren't Dentarg's bulk main army. So this last skirmishing attack force is going to get repelled. There are Dark Templar here. Ooh, they might be able to get probe kills. But there's GG well played. And good luck to advance to the round of 16 from Starsley. What a manor player. So that is it for Group E. We see Dentarg and Machine advance. Going to move on to Group F. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.